Bless you. Sign starts where? Zero. Zero. Goes up. Comes down. Down to negative one. Back up to zero. And then we can just follow the pattern backwards. So this would be a rough sketch of two periods of the sine, equa the sine equation, right? Everybody good with that? Nothing new. In fact, you should understand this section. It's just a matter of details that we have to get good at. So here, remember, this is your x-axis. This is your y-axis, right? When you read this equation, sine of x equals a half, there's two ways that you can think about it. Let's see. First, you need to understand that you're looking for x, and what does x represent? Say that louder. I thought you said an angle. Did you say that or no? I'm not asking you for the answer. But you're giving me angles, right? That's what I'm asking. X represents an angle, right? For, in particular, the angle that has what? A sine value of 1 half. Well, if we look at our graph, here's 1 half, right? How many places are there just on my graph where it's 1 half? Four of them. Okay. Now, how many answers you write or how you write your answer will be dependent on what they ask. Okay, so here's, here's how I do this. First of all, the sign here is positive, right? So what quadrants is the sign positive? <coughs> First and second. Those are the only two places sine is positive, right? So if we go around the unit circle once, then there's only going to be two times that we hit one half, right? So let's just write it out. The first time that the y coordinate or the sine value is one half is at what angle measure? 60. 30. It's at 30, but what does this mean? If it says, tell me the answer from 0 to 2 pi, they need to give me radians, right? So what's that? There we go. Pi over 6 is one answer. And if you know one of them, second quadrant, you don't have to do anything except, you know, if you know the unit, cir the unit circle. Over here, it's just one less, right? So 5 pi over 6, and then that, those are your solutions. Okay. We'll do C. So why do you need to know like, this? Why do you need to graph the sign? This was just so that you get the idea that there's many answers. How come it says find all the solutions and radians? So We're going to do that. We didn't find all the solutions. We only found two of them. I'll explain in a minute. Yes? Do you use the graph to find that No, I used unit circle knowledge. Okay. The graph here was just to illustrate that there are several angles that will have a sign value of one half, because this goes on from negative infinity to infinity. In particular, though, if we're only looking from zero to two pi, you can see on the graph there's only two times that that happens, and if you know your unit circle, it's in quadrant one and two. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, what are the degree measures for pi over six, pi, pi over six? 30 and 150. So that's it. Here's a good way to remember it. You see how they list 0, 2 pi? Then you're going to list your answers. Okay? Here where it says find all solutions, now you have to be fancy. Do you remember how we did that? So I could, I could start at, if I start here at pi over 6, right? If I start here at pi over 6, you guys know that if I go around 2 pi, 2 pi again, and 2 pi again, I always end up in this position, so there's several angles, right? 
How do I say that? Very good. Very good. So that would be not all the solutions. That's just half of the set. The other half would come from the second quadrant. So we would say x equals 5 pi over 6, also plus 2 pi k, where k is any integer. Any questions on how we're getting that? You guys know that this means infinite amount of answers, right? Yeah. You just keep adding 2 pi, you get everything, same thing here. In degrees, we just do x equals 30 degrees plus 360 degrees k, very good, where k is any integer, and 150 degrees plus 360 degrees k, where k is any integer. Okay. You can go backwards too. It's not just positive integers. Because because oh, even, even in the negative angle. Be one half positive, no matter if it's in the okay. Yes, exactly. So whether you rotate negatively or positively around the unit circle, at some point you will hit positive y values. Okay, good question. Does this kind of make sense? This is the first half of 9-4. It's just solving simple trig equations. So maybe let's try a cosine one. So turn the page. Yeah. Let's see if we can do this. I think you guys are somewhat competent. So let's skip the graphing part. Let's just go right for it and see if we can figure it out. Um... Let's do this one. Remember, we still have five minutes, so we're good. Where, so from zero to two pi, where is the first time that the cosine is zero? Remember, cosine is... Very good. Because at pi over two, the coordinates are zero, one, cosine is zero, right? Where else? So pi over 2 is good. Where else? 3 pi, three three pi, pi, pi over two. 2. Now, so we're done with this one. Pi over 2. 3 pi over 2. Because we're not going any further than 2 pi. Uh, that's the same as 90 and 270. <coughs> now, I'm going to be very nice about this. You could write the same thing that we did before and just do x equals pi over 2 plus what? 2 pi k and, and then also do x equals 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi k, right? But do you see that these are exactly the same distance away? How far apart are these? So we can do it in one set and say pi over 2 plus pi k where k is any integer. Less writing is well, I'm lazy, so less writing is good. But if you are not sure or you forget, you can still do one angle plus 2 pi k and then the other one plus 2 pi k. I'll count that because it's still technically correct. So then this would be x equals 90 plus 180 degrees k, where k is any integer. Okay, one more problem just because Nate packed up early. No, they're going to be all unit circle. They'll get a little weirder tomorrow, but it'll make sense. Let's do number two here. So now we're talking about tangents. Okay, this is not one of the zeros or, uh, you know, the easy ones. So let's figure out where is the tangent positive. That happens at quadrant... 1, because we want two positive coordinates, or two negative coordinates, right? Because tangents y over x or sine over cosine. Um, let's see. Root 3. If you don't know it off the top of your head, remember you have to do root 3 divided by 1 to get root 3, right? 
So these are the coordinates that we're thinking about to get a tangent of root 3. What angle has these coordinates? 60 is, per, so let's do it in radians first. Pi over 3. And then in the third quadrant, that'd be 4 pi over 3. In degrees, that's 60 degrees. And then we do 180 add 60 is 240. And again, you can do the same thing we did before, but you also, do you remember that the period for tangent is pi? Yeah. These will always be how far apart? Pi. So the easiest thing to do is make them one, set x equals pi over 3 plus pi k, and then x equals 60 degrees plus 180 degrees k. Or if you prefer, you can do each one twice and do 2 pi and 360. This makes sense? Okay. Uh, homework, I think, is day 5. That should be the one that's got a little bit of 9.3 in it and then a little bit of 9.4 in it. Okay. I'll see you guys tomorrow.